So good. What a great song. What an amazing song. This is in my testimony. I wonder what your fresh start story is over this season. What is it that God's been saying to you, doing in you and through you? I tell you what, I'd love to hear it. And the The great thing about this context is that you can tell us right now what's happening in your life and in your world, and you can do it by just dropping a comment on Facebook and YouTube. And I want to talk to you this morning about fresh starts. I want to talk to you about how the favour of God follows a fresh start culture. The favour of God follows a fresh start culture. It's the title of my message this morning, which is Favour Follows a Fresh Start Culture. Can write that down if you're taking notes. Grab a Bible if you have a Bible with you, or you can open your device to a Bible app if that's what you're using. Because I'm going to share some verses with you this morning, which I know are going to encourage you and are going to help you to live the kind of life where you see favor following your fresh start culture. So here we go. I want to jump straight into Romans chapter 12, verses 2. And this is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. And it talks about this. It says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation, a reformation, a fresh start, if you like, of how you think. A fresh start of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, a satisfying and perfect life in His eyes. Who wouldn't want to live a beautiful life, a satisfying life, a perfect life in the eyes of God? See, much of Paul's writing, like he's writing here to the church in Rome, much of Paul's writing to the early church, in fact, most of the New Testament, is this challenge. It's to leave the patterns and the ideals and the opinions of the culture that surrounds us and surrounded the first church 2,000 years ago and has surrounded us for the thousands of years that have been, to leave those patterns, to leave those opinions, to leave those ideals behind, to leave that culture that surrounds you behind and to make a fresh start with a new culture that is forming and beginning within you. The culture that is within you. I want to talk to you this morning about a fresh start culture that God wants to cultivate in your life. It's the kind of culture that we see favour following in every area of your life. And that's what this verse says in Romans chapter 12, verse 2, that the rewards of a fresh start culture kind of life are that favour will follow it. It's a beautiful life. It's a satisfying life. It's a perfect life. So do you want to see favour and beauty in your marriage? Do you want to see God's favour in your family? Do you want to see God's favour following your work and your business? Do you want to see the divine favour of God touch your dreams and your future endeavours as you move into what's next? out of what was. Is that what you want? Do you want to see God's favour on your life? Maybe you should be writing yes in the comment threads and write favour in capital letters. I want to see God's favour in my life. I pray that you do. My hope is that you do. Is this the kind of life that you want? A life that favour follows. And so if that's the case, then all we need to do is turn to that verse in Romans chapter 12, which says... to stop imitating the patterns and the ideals of the world around us and start to think again, to have a reformation, a reformation of how we think, to live in a new way, to have a fresh start kind of culture within our lives that will help us to see the will of God for us. His beautiful, His satisfying and His perfect will. So what does a fresh start culture look like that Paul's talking about? Does Paul give us any kind of idea, any kind of model, any kind of method to help us to move into living a life that has a fresh start culture? Well, in fact, Paul talks a lot about this kind of culture and he talks a lot about it in the context of the local church. And in Paul's worldview at the time, the church, when it's living out this fresh start culture, is in fact the one and only hope for the world. And guess what, church? Nothing has changed The church is the one and only hope for the world and you have been invited into God's great rescue plan for humanity. What a great honour. What a great privilege that it is that we get to do this, to live out of this life, this fresh start culture life. So Paul gives us heaps and heaps of support and ideas and models and methods for how we can live a fresh start culture life. And that's what I want to do this morning. I want to jump straight into this message and point us to what it looks like for us to live a fresh start culture 
and be a part of God's great rescue plan for humanity. I want to talk about this same fresh start culture that brings favour to the local church and how that same fresh start culture brings favour into your world. You know, beyond church over the last few months, like many churches and uh, many organisations around our world has had uh, a bit of a, a turbulent time. It's had a huge disruption. Uh, but what we've seen is that Beyond Church has continued to be the church during that time as we've transitioned into an online uh, experience. We've continued to be the church that we believe God has called us to be and we will continue to be the church that God has called us to be as we transition into the new thing, the fresh thing that God's doing in the life of this church. And as we begin to lead three locations, we're going to continue to be the church. And so what I want to do before I get any further into this, I just want to stop and thank all those people who have continued to be the church during this season. All of our location leaders and team leaders, all of those people serving on team, all those people who faithfully engage with our online experience over the last few months, I want to say thank you for continuing to be the church. And because of that, because of your faithfulness toward what God's called you to, we've continued to see people say yes to Jesus for the very first time. In fact, even last weekend, we saw someone else say yes to Jesus. This is a phenomenal miracle that God is still at work irrespective of what things look like, that God's still doing all that He said He would do as we continue to uphold and live out the culture that God has called us to live as the church. We've continued to see people say yes to Jesus. We've continued to see people say yes to serving on teams. We had Beyond Basics two weekends ago, and we saw people step into serving the local church, even though they cannot be in the room. This is crazy. This is phenomenal. This is the culture of heaven, the culture of the kingdom of God at work in our world. We've seen people say yes to leading teams, leading new life groups during this season. Can you, I mean, this is, this is phenomenal that people are just continuing to say yes to what God's got on their life. And we've even seen people say yes to lead brand new church locations in this season. God's at work. And so that same favour that's following the life of the local church as it lives out the culture of heaven is the same favour that I know God wants to see in your life as you live the fresh start culture that He's calling you to live. So what does Paul talk about a fresh start culture looking like? Well, I want to just very quickly go through a few things that we see a fresh start culture looking like in the New Testament. Are you ready for these? The first one that we see is a fresh start culture is number one, a salvation culture. In Romans chapter 10, verse 13, the Bible says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And salvation is central to a fresh start culture. And we have to make room for this miracle, church. We have to make room for this miracle every time we gather, every place we gather. So every single person has every opportunity to say yes to Jesus for the first time. And the culture of the local church, it has to be guest first, visitor first. It has to be friend first. And if you've said yes to Jesus before, then your new mission in this world is to point the rest of our hurting and broken world to their Saviour, Jesus Christ. You know, churches do so many great things and they should, but the difference between the church and the charity or the church and the sport club or the church and the book club or the church and the bike club or the, the church and the Rotary Club or the Lions Club, the difference is the church isn't just trying to help you live a better life. It's actually trying to call you to live a surrendered life, a life surrendered to Jesus. And so when you encounter church, you should encounter Jesus. And therefore, we are here for those who are not yet here. We are here for those who are yet to say yes to Jesus. So our preaching, our special events, our kids programs, our, our music, our youth, our academy, our church planting, it's all about helping people connect with Jesus for the very first time. And at Beyond Church, we will always say that we point people to Jesus as the one and only hope for humanity. A fresh start culture is a salvation culture. A fresh start culture is also a hospitable culture. In Romans chapter 16, verse 1, I mean, I love this verse. Listen to this. It says, Be sure to welcome, this is Paul again, speaking to the church about culture. He says to the church and he's saying to you and he's saying to me, when you are welcoming people into your world, into your life, into your family, into your community, he's saying this. He says, when you welcome my friend Phoebe, welcome her in the way of the master, the culture of the kingdom, the way of the master, with all the generous hospitality that we Christians are famous for. Generous hospitality. So I wonder, are Christians really famous for their generous hospitality? And why 
are Christians famous for their generous hospitality? Let me just list off a few examples as, as to why it has come about that Christians are so famous for their generous hospitality. In John chapter 2, verse 1, Jesus' first miracle. That's right. The very first thing Jesus decides to do to show that He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Are you ready? He turns water into wine. Jesus miraculously uh, in John chapter 6, verse 10, and in Matthew chapter 15, verse 35, feeds thousands of people on two separate occasions. In Luke 24, verse 30 to 32, Jesus broke bread with his disciples and they had a meal together. This is after he was resurrected. And that's how they recognized his identity as the Savior. When they had a meal together, when he broke bread, there was something very familiar about that experience for his disciples because he would do it very, very frequently. In the same chapter, we see that Jesus appears to his disciples uh, uh, for the first time and he asks for some fish to eat to, sh- to show that he is who he says he is. In John chapter 21, verse 10, Jesus appeared for the third time to his disciples after his resurrection, this time again around a, like a miracle catch of fish cooked over a fire. There's something about Jesus and food, right? In the book of Luke, there's 10 separate stories where Jesus is eating meals with people and nothing opens our hearts more than a generously open, full table. I've had some conversations with some of these people who are new to Beyond Church over the last little while. Um, And this is only over the last couple of months. And many of those who are new to Beyond Church have come to connect with us through our Tuesday night church service or our Beyond Church online experience. And in these conversations, there's been this common thread emerging as I've asked people, you know, what was it that helped you connect with us? What was it that, you know, really opened your heart to either saying yes to Jesus or, you know, moving into what God had called you to through the life of Beyond Church? And there was a common thread emerging and it seemed to be a lot about food, <laughs> the power of a meal together. The Tuesday night church experience means that we can have a meal first before we uh, move on to what's next. And even those who have connected online have come together in this building and they've had a meal together and taken their next step in their journey with Jesus. A fresh start culture is always a hospitable culture. Number three, a fresh start culture is a growth culture. I love this. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 to 16, I love this verse. It says, No prolonged infancies among us, please, will not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are an easy target for imposters. God wants us, you and me, to grow up to know the whole truth and tell it in love like Christ in everything. And at Beyond Church, we say that everybody has a next step. We are unapologetic about having an aggressive growth culture. And for us corporately, for us as individuals, when our mission is one of eternal significance, where the eternal destiny of the human soul hangs in the balance, we build a whatever it takes culture, a growth culture, a you have a next step culture. In Romans chapter 8, verse 15, this is on the screen for you. The Bible says, this resurrection life that you have received from Christ, that I have received from Christ, it isn't a grave tending. It isn't a timid grave tending life, but it's adventurously expectant, greeting our God with a childlike what's next. Your life with Jesus is a what's next kind of life. The fresh start culture that God's trying to call you to this morning is a what's next kind of culture. He wants to help you to grow up into all that He has on your life. Do you believe that this morning? You know, there might be someone watching this right now who doesn't really believe that there is a next step for them. They might think they're past it, beyond it, too old for it, not smart enough for it, not rich enough for it, not prepared enough for it. I want to shatter that that idea right now. For you, friend, whoever you might be, you need to hear this from God this morning, that you have a next step in Him that He has more for you than where you are, that nothing disqualifies you from the call of God, that there's something profound on your life. There's destiny written all over you. So don't ever throw away the vision and dream that God's placed on your life because of your own insecurity or inadequacy. God speaking to you this morning is calling you into a growth culture for your own life. So stop saying that it's too small, that you that you're, uh, don't have enough, that you uh, can't get there because God wants to move you into something significant. And don't hold yourself back when God is opening the door for you this morning. You believe that? It's for someone out there this morning, yeah? It's for someone listening right now. I wonder what's next for you in this fresh start season. I wonder what's next for you. I wonder what's your next step. 
at Beyond Church, we try and make it as easy as possible for you to take a next step. Maybe it's to join a life group. Maybe it's to come to our next Beyond Basics, which is on, on this weekend. I think it's on Sunday. Is that right? This Sunday coming. It's 19th of July. You could be there for that. You can connect with us by filling out that form and let us know you want to take a next step, join one of our teams. Maybe it's just being here again in the online room this afternoon for our scone service or maybe Tuesday night. Maybe it's just connecting again. But everybody has a next step. And I wonder what it is for you. A fresh start culture is a growth culture. A fresh start culture is, number four, a leadership culture. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, the Bible says, Let me tell you why you are here. Oh, I love that. I wonder if you would like to know why you are here. Why am I here? What am I doing in this world? Most of the movies that I watch on Netflix are all about why am I here? The answering the big questions of life. Let me tell you, Jesus says, why you are here. You are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the God flavours of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will you taste or how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Well, I don't want to end up in the garbage. Do you, Ronan? No, I don't want to end up in the garbage. Are yeah, you, Barb? No. I want to be salty, like in a good way. Apparently all the, all the kids... Does your, do your kids say that word, salty? Do your kids say that? Just type in the comment thread if you, if you know what salty means. Just give me a definition because apparently it kind of means if you're a little bit sort of sour, angry, grumpy. Yeah. We, we have digressed, friends. <laughs> Let's get back on track here. The fresh start culture is a leadership culture. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here to lead. Yeah, that's right. You might have, you might have been reluctant to step into leadership in your life's journey. Well, this is the morning where you step into leadership because that's what God's called you to, to be seasoning. You're meant to stand out as a person who follows Jesus. You're meant to be bright, not grey. You're not meant to be vanilla. You're meant to have some kind of taste about you. Do you know vanilla has no flavour? That's right. When you add sugar to it, it has a flavour. It has an odour, but it has no flavour. You're meant to be something more than just grey. You know, church is only boring when you're boring. And you have permission right now this morning not to be boring, but to be interesting people. You are meant to be on the edge of innovation and on the edge of community transformation, leading the way in your community. The church needs to be the flavour of the month, not a sour taste in the mouth of its community. You're meant to be brave, friend. You're meant to be the first brushstroke on the canvas. It's always the bravest. That's you. You're meant to be the leader, the first to lead in your world, to lead your family, to lead in your workplace, the kind of person that turns up first, that stays late, asks, what else can I do to go above and beyond? You're meant to be vocal about the cause of the local church. You're not meant to be hidden. You're meant to be salt seasoning because if you aren't, how will people step into all that God has for them? If He's done it for you, He wants to do it for others and He's called you into leading in every area of your life. A fresh start culture is a leadership culture. And I know the next generation of leaders will be launched into significance from the leadership pipeline of the local church. The world's greatest architects, the world's greatest educators, composers, politicians, the world's greatest business people, doctors, academics, artists, they're all going to be inspired and equipped and encouraged by the leadership greenhouse that is the local church. It's the vision Paul had for the church in Rome when he said, don't be conformed to the patterns, ideals and ideas of the culture around you, but be transformed, have a reformation of how you think, have a fresh start culture that then allows you to transform the world in which God has placed you. You are meant to be the leader where God has placed you. So stand up and begin to lead just like God has called you to. A fresh start culture for you, friend, is a leadership culture. And lastly, as I wrap up, a fresh start culture is a youth culture. Woo, come on. All my young people, I want to hear you. If you're under 35, you need to write in the comment thread. You need to write in the comment thread. Youth, if you're under 35, capitals, all caps, emojis, exclamation marks. Send me a TikTok if you're under 35. A fresh start culture is a youth culture. I'll get to us over 35s in a minute. At Beyond Church, we say that we'll flourish from generation to generation. My mother 
She's watching right now. Hi, Mum. <laughs> she used to take me to church every single Sunday, sometimes twice a Sunday. She used to sit under the front row and under the chair and colour in. And for every one of those weeks, I loved church. I did. Because I was included. I was appreciated. I was encouraged. And I was inspired by what I was a part of. And it, it wasn't about the size of the church. It wasn't about the style of the music. Because, oh my goodness, we would not be singing those songs today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It wasn't the length of the sermons because they were long. And I've got, I'm 20 seconds over already. And it feels like I'm only just getting started. What was it? Could it be there was something supernatural at work in this environment that we call church? Something intangible, something of the power of God at work that, that if immersed in it for long enough, consistently enough as a child, it sets our kids up to flourish in life. You see, a young church like ours, it actually needs every generation. In Psalm 119 verse 90, I haven't got this on the screen, but it says your faithfulness, God's faithfulness extends to every generation as enduring as the earth you created. See, older people, if you're over 35, if you're like me, you're an old man or an old woman, we need to be lifting up, not holding back. And our role is to be the cheer squad, championing those who are growing in their faith journey and their gift. We don't need to be the maturity police. We need to be the cheer squad. And young people, if you're under 35, listen, tune in, hone in. You probably have tuned out because I've gone for more than 20 minutes, but you just refocus. Here we go. This verse is for you. Highlight this if you haven't already in your device. It says 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Don't let anything, don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers, old and young. An example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, your faith and your purity. And as I wrap it up, here's my question. What's the culture of your life today? Do you live a fresh start culture kind of life where the favour of God follows you? wherever you go? Do you know Jesus? Are you living a generous life? Do you have an aggressive growth agenda for you and for your family? Are you leading in every area of your life? And are you championing the generations to come? Everybody's first step toward this growth culture, toward this fresh start culture is a yes to Jesus. I mentioned it very first that a fresh start culture is a salvation culture. And friend, if you've been watching and you've made it right to the end right now and you have never said yes to Jesus before, then I know this invitation is for you. Do not let it pass you by. Take a hold of it. Grab a hold of it with everything you have and say yes to Jesus for the first time and watch Him transform your life, the way you think, the culture of your family, the culture of your community. Let Him allow you to be the change agent that you know you've been called to be, to lift up and raise up the people around you that you've been called to, to serve. Come on, this is your moment to step into God's destiny for your life. Would you like that this morning, friend? If that's you, let me pray with you this morning. This prayer is going to invite Jesus into your world and totally transform your life forever. If that's you, why don't you pray this prayer after me? Close your eyes with me and let's pray this prayer together. Jesus, this is my decision. Today, I say yes to you. You died on the cross to pay the price for my sin. I invite you to be my saviour. Come into my life, forgive my sin, and fill me with the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.